Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the interest coverage ratio or the interest cover ratio. What is this ratio? Well, this ratio measures an entity's ability to make interest payments on its debt when they come due. Okay, so it's seeing how is the company able to make its interest payments. Okay, it measures its ability to make the interest payments. And it's important to note that this is interest payments, okay, not the actual debt, okay, not the principal of the debt, but the interest payments. That is the interest coverage or the interest cover ratio. The higher this ratio is, the better it is because it means that the company is comfortably able to meet its interest expense obligations. Okay, so if a company has a very high ratio and it keeps going high, that's a good thing. Okay, that's a good sign because it means that it's got it's able to cover its interest expense by more times. Okay, so when you compute this ratio and you get the answer, it's actually giving you the number of times you're able to cover your interest expense with your profits. Okay, obviously before you pay the interest expense and before you pay your taxes, but you'll get that now when you go through the example. This ratio is obviously useful for lenders such as banks and investors in evaluating the company's liquidity. Okay, so if you think about it, interest coverage ratio measures how many times a company is able to meet its interest expense obligations. Okay, so if I am a bank and I'm considering borrowing a specific company money, I will want to see what it, its interest coverage ratio is. Okay, so I will know that are they, are they able to cover their current interest expenses and will they be able to cover my interest expense if I am to borrow the money as a bank? Okay, so that's why it's important for them to, uh, to see what the interest coverage ratio is. It's also important for investors. Why? Because the first thing that you pay before you pay the investors is the interest expense. Okay, unless the investor is also putting in money as debt or a loan. Okay, but if I'm a shareholder of the business, I know that the company has to pay interest expense way before it can pay me because the interest expense ranks high in priority. Okay, it's, it's before you even come to your net profit that you have to pay your interest expense. So it will be important for me to know if they're able to cover their interest expense and how comfortably are they able to do that? How many times are they able to cover their interest expense? And then I will know that the company is doing well or it's able to meet its obligations in terms of interest expense. Okay. Another thing to note here is that the interest coverage ratio does not tell you everything about the company. That's why we have many other ratios alongside it. Okay. So it's just one of the ratios that you consider. So you don't look at it in isolation, but you also consider the other ratios as well. And with any other ratio, this ratio, whenever you get the answer, let's say it's the answer is four times for a specific company. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Well, like I say, with all the ratios that we do lessons on, a ratio on its own is not going to be useful. Okay. You have to compare it to something else. So it will also be different. The interest coverage ratio will be different from one industry to another. Okay. So interest coverage ratio of Two, for instance, might be very bad for a specific industry, but might be okay or might be average for another industry. So that's one thing that you have to consider. Again, when you're making comparisons, you can compare the trend over the over a period of years or over a period of months. Okay, so you can do the interest coverage ratio monthly or quarterly or semi-annually or annually, and then you can compare them over a period of time, maybe for the past five years and see is it growing or is it going down? And that's why, and that's how you're able to make an analysis or that's how you're able to interpret the ratio. You can also compare it to your competitors into interest coverage ratio to see how you're doing compared to your competitor, you can also compare it with the industry average, okay, to see how well the company is doing. Okay, so what is the formula for the interest coverage ratio? Well, here it is. It's the EBIT, and by EBIT, we mean earnings before interest and tax divided by interest expense. And another word for interest expense is your finance cost. Okay, so it's as simple as that. And that is not the only way you calculate the interest coverage ratio. Others will calculate it using the operating profit divided by interest expense. Another way to do it is to take the EBITDA or earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization, and then you divide it by the interest expense. So you can see that the denominator 
always stays the same. It is the interest expense. That is why it is the interest coverage ratio. But the numerator, these are the various ways you will see the formula showing you on how to calculate the interest coverage ratio. But the most common way or the most popular way of calculating the interest coverage ratio is by using the EBIT, okay, earnings before interest and tax, divided by interest expense. And that's the one we'll use when we go through this example that we're about to go through. But quickly, what is the difference between earnings before interest and tax and the net profit, the final profit? Well, the only difference is that with the earnings before interest and tax, it's before we deduct the interest expense and before we deduct the taxation. Okay, and that is why we don't use the net profit because net profit you already have deducted your interest expense as well as taxation. So you want to see before you consider that and bear in mind that we only pay tax after we pay all our expenses or after we take care of all our expenses, not necessarily pay all our expenses, but after we take an account of all our expenses. So it did not make sense to use net profit where you have already deducted your taxation. Okay. You only consider tax after you've taken out all your expenses, which includes interest expense. Okay. So that is why we use earnings before interest and tax. And remember, it has to be before the interest expense so that you can see how much you are, how many times you're able to pay that interest expense. Okay. And then Many question, many students would usually ask, does this in earnings before interest and tax include interest income? Yes, it does. The only thing that the earnings before interest and tax doesn't include is the interest expense and the taxation. So it does include the interest income if you have any interest income. Okay. And then another way, operating profit. What's the difference between operating profit and earnings before interest and tax? Well, we've done a lesson specifically on that. So you'll find the link in the description below. But in short, operating profit is your profit from operations. Earnings before interest and tax takes into account other sources of income, okay? Like the interest income. If you do not offer credit to customers or you do not, um, you do not lend money to other customers in your usual course of business, then it will not be an operating uh, income. It will not be an operating income. That is why it will come after the operating profit, okay? And then you arrive later on at earnings before interest and tax. So that is the difference. Operating profit only takes into account the operations, okay, the expenses and the income from operations. Earnings before interest and tax, this takes into account all your income, including other income, which are not necessarily from operations, okay? And then EBITDA, the only difference here is that it's earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, which is a non-cash item, as well as amortization. So there is the difference between the three. But let's focus on the first one, earnings before interest and tax, divide by interest expense. So let's go through an example and show you how to do this. Here's the first example. We are given the statement of comprehensive income for the year end at 28 February 2018. We are given all the way from revenue, gross profit, operating profit, EBITDA, EBIT, and then finally net profit here at the end. And you can see here our operating expenses, obviously it's shortened. Uh, we didn't include the other ones just because of the space. And we want to make this as simple as possible. You can see the other expenses there, but that's neither here nor there. So how do we calculate the interest coverage ratio? Well, like we mentioned the formula, it's the earnings before interest and tax divided by the interest expense. Okay. So earnings before interest and, ta and tax, it's the EBIT, okay? And there it is over there. The EBIT is 145,553,028 Ren, okay? So that is the EBIT over there. And that is the numerator that we'll use in calculating the interest coverage ratio. And then what will be our denominator? It's the interest expense, otherwise known as the finance cost of 40,351,656 Ren, okay? So we have our numerator we have our denominator and i'm sure here now you can be able to see the difference between our operating profit our ebitda and our ebit okay so you can see here our ebitda does not include depreciation but our ebit does include depreciation does take into, that into account and then earnings before interest and tax obviously does not include interest and the taxation to arrive at the net profit does not include those two okay that's the difference between ebit and the net profit and here we have it, 145,553,028 rand for the EBIT divided by the 40,351,656 rand, which is the finance cost or the interest expense. And what do we get? We get 3.61 times. So what does this mean? Well, it means that with your profits, you are able to cover your interest expense 3.61 times 
times okay in simple terms if you are to put it in another way i would say that if you are asked to pay your interest expense as many times as you could today how many times would you be able to do it well you'd be able to pay your interest expense 3.61 times now is it a good thing is it a bad thing well you have to take into consideration the things that i mentioned in the beginning what industry are you in again you can make comparatives remember you can compare to the previous period you can compare to your competitor you can compare to the industry average so for instance if last year we had a interest coverage ratio of 4.5 and now we have 3.61 times what does it mean it means that we are not doing as well as we did last year last year we were able to cover our interest expense 4.5 times and now we are only able to cover it 3.61 times or for instance if last year was 3 and now it's 3.61 it means we are improving or if you are to compare it with your competitor so you can see the higher it is the better and if you compare it to your competitor if yours is higher than your competitors you are doing better than them and vice versa okay and that is how you would interpret this ratio I hope this has made sense. I hope you're able to understand the lesson from explaining why we do the interest coverage ratio, what the formula is, and how to interpret or analyze the actual ratio. If you have gained value from this lesson, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time, cheers.